Hello, everyone. Welcome to Jimbo's Math Corner. Today, we're going to be doing some fun problem solving for a series. And I'm Dimbo. Oh, uh, hey, Dimbo. I didn't know that you were going to... What is this, chemistry? Not remotely. Cool, let's start. Uh, um, well, okay, okay, I guess. Well, um, I guess Dimbo's going to be joining us. <laughs> uh, let's just jump into the series, shall we? Well, here's what we're starting with. We have the sum from 1 to infinity of natural log of n over n minus natural log of n times negative 1 to the n. So, what's the first thing that sticks out to me? Well, obviously, the negative 1 to the n. This tells me that there's going, some, going to be something going on with an alternating series. So, in a normal testing situation, you would want to do the absolute series test, or you would want to test the absolute value using one of our tests and seeing if that converges. If that converges, it converges absolutely. But for this, let's go ahead and just start with the alternating series test to see if it converges conditionally first. Well, let's say that we have b sub n that equals natural log of n over n minus natural log of n. We have a checklist for, for doing the alternating series test. It has to be positive, decreasing, and continuous. So we know that b sub n uh, equals natural log of n over n minus natural log of n. It's going to be positive for all n over 1. It can't be 1 because that would be 0 over 1, which is 0. So that's not positive. And the natural log of 0 doesn't exist. So we just know it's going to be greater than 1. And that all values of natural log of n are going to be smaller than the actual n values. So it's going to be positive in the numerator and positive in the denominator. So is it decreasing? We're, we're going to have to check for that. First, let's say that there's a function f of x similar to b sub n equals natural log of n over n minus natural log of n. Say f of x equals natural log of x over x minus natural log of x. Now we can take the derivative of natural log of x over x minus natural log of x. So now we have 1 over x times x minus natural log of x minus natural log of x times 1 minus 1 over x over x minus natural log of x squared. This becomes x over x minus natural log of x over x minus natural log of x plus natural log, natural log of x over x over x minus natural log of x squared. So we can cancel out these terms because it's minus and plus natural log of x over x. This becomes 1 minus natural log of x over x minus natural log of x squared. So after x equals 2, this is going to be negative because 1 is staying constant and all values of natural log of x when x is 2 or greater is going to be greater than 1. And our denominator is always going to be positive since it's squared. So it's going to be negative over positive, which is negative. So we know that our natural log of n over n minus natural log of n is going to be decreasing from 2 to infinity. So finally, we have to check if it's continuous. The limit of n as it approaches infinity of natural log of n over n minus natural log of n will become infinity over infinity. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. We have this equals the limit as n approaches infinity, 1 over n over 1 minus 1 over n. This equals 0 over 1, which is 0. That's perfect. That shows us that it's continuous. So knowing this, we know that it's decreasing, positive, and continuous. Oops. So that means it converges. Yes, it absolutely converges. Well, no. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. I can see it right there. Where? On the board. It converges, and I can absolutely see it. That's not what absolutely convergence means. Oh, we have to actually check if it converges absolutely. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. So we see that the summation of our series, uh, the absolute value of our series, is going to basically just be 1 times this, which is going to be the, the summation of natural log of n over n minus natural log of n from 1 to infinity. Knowing this, we can say we can then do a comparison test between a sub n, which is natural log of n over n minus natural log of n, and b sub n, which is natural log of n over n, since the two series are very, very similar. And we're assuming that both series are positive with a sufficiently large n. Because we can see that the denominator in b sub n is greater than the denominator in a sub n, we know that b sub n is smaller than a sub n. So we can also see that natural log of n over n is positive and continuous. 
positive because natural log is always going to be positive and n is always going to be positive for any value we put in. Continuous because we know that natural log of n is continuous. And finally, the derivative is going to be equal to x over x minus natural log of x over x squared. This equals to 1 minus natural log of x over x squared. So this is going to be negative for all values greater than 1, as we said before. This means that v sub n is decreasing for x is greater than 1. So knowing all of this, decreasing positive and continuous, we can do the integral test. So we have an integral from 1 to infinity natural log of x over x dx equals the limit as t goes to infinity from 1 to t, because we have to follow integral laws still. So now we have the integral, or the limit of t to infinity of the integral natural log of x over x dx equals the limit as t goes to infinity are now integrated value. So we have this value natural log of x squared over 2. This is found using u substitution, but I think you, you all are smart enough to know that. So now we have the limit as t goes to infinity of natural log t squared over 2 equals infinity. This is because this value of natural log of infinity is always going to be increasing. So then we have natural log of n over n is less than natural log of n over n minus natural log of n. And we know this because our denominator, once again, is greater in the n uh, than the n minus natural log of n. So by the comparison test rules, we know that natural log of n over n minus natural log of n diverges by the comparison test. That's right. It diverges. Well, no. It converges by the alternating series test, and it diverges by the comparison test. Absolutely. No. What do you call something that works sometimes, but not other times? Lazy. No, it's conditional. Our series is conditionally convergent. Absolutely. Thank you for coming to Jimbo's Math Corner. I hope you gained something from this. Have a great day.